Hey, good day, good day everyone and once again your favorite uncle is here right to give you some great lessons when it comes to maths and science so if it's your first time joining us please don't hesitate hit that subscribe button and of course uh, you can get in touch with us for all our lessons uh, you know any, any service that you might need our website is mlungesingosi.co.za and of course you can get in touch on email um, we have online classes that we offer uh, info at mlungesingosi.co.za all right so let's jump right into our lessons all right so we're going to be talking today about electrostatics right so uh, as i said um, so we'll be uh, looking at this section just a little bit more broadly uh, as we go along right so this will be lesson one of course another lesson will come uh, and until we conclude this section right so first of all let's look at electrostatics so electrostatics comes from a compound word meaning electricity right so we're looking at movement of charge in this case and statics means that that is stationary uh, that means electricity that is not in motion so there is no motion here all right so i mean one day you are moving on a cap carpet you know across the carpet floor and as soon as you touch the doorknob right especially in winter right if you're walking ar across that carpet as soon as you touch that doorknob oh tick there's that surge of electricity you know just uh, um you know uh, you feel it in your hands right that is called electro uh, electrostatics right or you know sometimes if even if you take off your jersey okay you can try it especially in winter as well when you take off your jersey in the dark you'll see that there are little sparks that are showing there and all of that is a sign that there is electricity that is not in motion in this case referred to as electrostatics okay of course, some of you would have seen when you rub a ruler, uh, you know, on your head. OK, there's a transfer of, uh, you know, charge in that case, causing obviously uh, the ruler to end up with, uh, um, you know, positive charges. And as a result, it will be able to attract paper. Right. Now, let's let's explain what causes all of that. Right. So in this case. When we talk about electrostatics, so first of all what happens there are positive and negative charges we usually call the positive charges protons right so the positive charge is called a proton right but we also have negative charges right and we call the negative charges electrons right so i'm going to put there those electrons right over there right now what happens when the number of protons and the number of electrons are equal, right? So if you note there, how many protons do we have? We've got six positively, uh, positive charges and we also have six negative charges, right? So in this case, what happens? Well, we say this particle or this object has no charge, right? So in this case, we say that it has no charge remember what it means when we say there there's no charge in this case or we can say that it is neutral that's the word that we use right so when we say an object is neutral it means that the number of positive charges is equal to the number of negative charges okay right now what happens in this case when i can remove either a positive or negative charge let's remove two of those charges right so what happens now we've got an excess of electrons right so we've got more negative charges than we do uh, positive charges right or we can say well we've got a, a, a deficit a deficiency of positive charges so as a result this guy becomes negatively charged i want you to please remember that so when i say that an object is negatively charged i do not mean that there are no protons but what it simply means is that there are more electrons than there are 
protons. Okay, All right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. But similarly, let's just try and get these back again. So if I can put in, now let's get some more protons into this, right? So once I have more protons than I have electrons, what happens all of a sudden? Well, my object becomes positively charged. Okay, I know you guys guessed it correctly. So they become positively charged. Okay, so remember again, when I say something is positively charged, all I simply mean is that I've got, in this case, more protons than I do electrons. It does not mean that there are no electrons at all. Okay, right. Now, we're going to talk about Coulomb's law in just a bit. Okay, but here's what we know. Once we've got charged particles, right, they start exerting forces on each other, right? So if I've got a positively charged particle, remember what did we say positively charged means? It means that there's got, we, we've got more protons than we do electrons, right? So we say that like charges repel each other. So if I've got positive and positive, what happens? They push each other away. The type of force that they exert on each other is a force of repulsion. Okay, so this would be a force of repulsion. Right, now equally so, even if I were to have negative charges, right? So if I do have negative charges, what type of force will I exert on, on each other? So again, they will exert forces of repulsion on each other. So the moment we've got like charges, we know that they will repel each other. So what happens when we've got unlike charges, ladies and gents? So once I've got a positive charge and a negative charge, what begins to happen? Well, in this case, they start exerting forces on each other, right? And the nature of that force is called a force of attraction, okay? So they will attract each other if they are unlike charges. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. We'll talk about uh, the nature of that force in accordance to Coulomb's law, okay? Right, so what I just want us to quickly express uh, right now is to talk about, well, um, in this case, we, we call it the quantization of charge, right? So we talk about quantization of charge. Now, that sounds like a big fancy word, right? But when we talk about quantization of charge, in this case, we are simply referring to a simple phenomenon, ladies and gents. And I want you to please follow me as I talk about this, right? So... When we're looking at the word quantization, right? So you can see there, there's quanti, right? So which means you are able to get the specific number uh, of something, okay? So what does it mean when we say that a charge or charge is quantized, all right? So all it simply means, ladies and gents, is that, um, you know, charge consists of, uh, you know, particles, um, in this case, that are called quantums, all right? We call them quantums, all right? And that you can actually simply, uh, uh, you know, count them, all right? So in this case, it's made up of, uh, uh, you know, smaller quantums in this case, and they each have a unit, okay? They each have a unit, and each unit has got a quantum all right so the each electron has got 1.6 or a charge of 1.6 exponent negative 19 coulombs right so we measure charge in coulombs are you with me now right so in this case that means that every time that i look at a, a single electron or a single proton in this case this would be the amount of charge on them, right? So meaning that if I've got multiple electrons, right, that number, I will see multiples of that uh, number that is given there, 
Okay, so as a result, it means that I can tell exactly how many electrons there are. Okay, right. So in this case, um, it means that when we're talking about a quantum, it's a quantity that cannot be made any smaller. So you cannot get a fraction of this number, right? So it means we can only now get multiples uh, of, of uh, this number that we are referring to, right? So when we look at electrons, this is the unit charge of a single electron or a single proton. Of course, with electrons, they would be negatively charged. With protons, they would be positively charged. All right, so quickly, let's have a look at it, okay? So suppose we've got, um, you know, uh, a, an object, right? So they give us an object, whatever that object is, it is a sphere, right? And they tell us that, hey, look, we've got the charge of this object, let's call it uh, object P. They say to us, well, the object has got a charge of negative 6.4 uh, times 10, negative 19 coulombs, right? Uh, sorry, that's coulombs there, right? And they ask us, right, calculate the number, okay, calculate the number of electrons that are there, the number of electrons on this object, right? So now what are we going to do? Remember, we know the charge of the particular, uh, you know, object, and we know the unit charge of an electron. Now note, once it's negatively charged, we said, what does it mean? It means that we've got more electrons than we do uh, protons. So as a result, when I want to know how many electrons there are, there, I will say number of electrons in this case will be the charge of the particle divided by the unit charge of an electron. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes they use QE for that. So I will say, well, this is going to be negative 6.4 exponent negative 19 divided by negative 1.6 times 10 to the exponent negative 19, right? So what are we going to do? Just whip out our calculator, isn't it? So that's negative 6.4, right? Uh, please note, I'm going to use the exponent button next to the answer button at the bottom, right? Uh, it's much easier to use than uh, to, um, you know, use the one, you know, times 10 to the power of, okay. So that's divided by another negative 1.6 exponent negative 19. All right, do you see that? I get a number of four, right? So it means in, uh, in sphere P, there are actually four electrons. Now note, ladies and gents, because we are counting, uh, you know, actual numbers, right? In this case, it means we are going to use natural numbers, um, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So in this case, there are four electrons in total, right? So when they say to you calculate the number of particles, uh, we cannot get a negative number. So that is why if it's an electron, you're going to use negative, right? So if it's a negatively charged object, you're going to use negative 1.6. But if it's a positively charged object, you're going to use positive uh, 1.6. Okay, right. Um, I want to uh, kind of delve into something, um, you know, just about the uh, conservation of charge uh, before I conclude. And we're going to look into the next video of it. Okay, right. So please remember, we did say whenever you've got charges that are uh, are the same, right? Uh, like charges, we know we'll experience a force of attraction uh, of repulsion rather, and we know that when we've got a force, I mean when we've got unlike charges, then we've got a force of attraction. I just want to uh, look at some uh, symbols that we use, right? So I want you to please note. There are some symbols that we use in electrostatics or in physics. Um, so I am going to actually just give a little bit of a, 
a tabularized format there okay so in this table i'm going to uh, uh, to give you the name okay and i'm going to give the symbol okay and i'm going to give the factor so that you know uh, in this case what it actually means right right i'm gonna start in this case with uh, the symbol pico right i'm gonna only uh, do the ones that are popular right so uh, we use the greek symbol pico okay so the greek symbol is rho there okay this is times 10 to the negative 12 keep that in mind right so when i see the symbol p in this case i know that they're referring to times 10 negative 12 so we've got nano right so we use you know that greek symbol there right so in this case that's times 10 negative 9 please keep that in mind okay right and then we've got um we've got a micro okay and in this case they like using this quite often uh, you can say a greek symbol u uh, in this case um, or you can actually say uh, it's the greek symbol new right so that is going to be times 10 um, minus 6 okay and of course we've got other ones which is mealy okay uh, all of these uh, there's be a millimeter or whatever so in this case we use small n for milli right this is times 10 minus 3 okay but you also have centi right so you've got centi you know say when you say centimeters we use the small c this is times 10 minus 2 right or you can just divide by 100 uh, in this case right so um that those are the symbols that we have of course you do have others okay uh, we can just uh, continue with that right so in this case we can have a uh, deci okay now when you say deci that small d note that this is times 10 minus 1 okay there's a difference between deci and deca right so in this case when you say deci that's times 10 minus 1 that's why when you say cubic decimeter it will be times 10 minus 3 because you are actually multiplying it uh, by itself three times right so ladies and gents uh, just going to talk about uh, just uh, two more so in this case uh, when we use kilo right remember that's that small k there right remember this is times 10 to the power 3 so in this case it's now positive right it's positive 3 and if you're going to say mega okay so we use the big m note the difference between this one and this one okay so mega and milli right the difference is the small m and the other one is the big m right so mega is times 10 uh, to the exponent 6 uh, in this case, you can have obviously giga and so on and so forth. But I'm going to, uh, for the sake of our lesson, uh, keep it there. Right. So in this case, if I give you a charge and I say this is negative 10 microcoulombs, right? So then you know this would be negative 10 times 10 negative six right so let me write down that micro nicely so that you can see it okay or sometimes they just use a u so you know this is going to be negative 10 times 10 negative six uh, coulombs okay so this is the table that we're going to use and even as we continue to talk about coulombs law that is what we we are going to use all right for now, I'm going to leave it here, ladies and gents. Please catch us on episode two, where I will be talking about the, uh, the force between those charged particles using Coulomb's law. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.